Welcome back again. I, I want to take a few minutes, and I probably won't be as long as I do when I uh, do a church service on Sunday. But this past Sunday, our uh, system kind of had a it took a break. It went on vacation. I don't know what happened, but somehow or another, the volume didn't come through, nor the nor everything that we talked about. And if in order for you to 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 be where we need you to be. When we're talking about Nehemiah, I need you to kind of be with us from the very beginning. So I want to give a brief synopsis uh, so that this will replace what was on the actual uh, website showing our past sermon so you can have this right here. So this is why I'm here right now. If you can, join us this coming Sunday because we'll be on Nehemiah Part 2. Uh, now, and the series title is called Making Adjustments. I love to make adjustments. I, I, I make adjustments in many things I do and some the people that I, I come around, sometimes the best thing to do is just to tell them what little thing you need to do. Uh, for instance, I, I love golfing, and, and part of me in golfing is, is is my swing, and I don't swing as bad as some people. I know I don't, but I don't have a full swap follow through on my swing, and it's costing me. Now, I still hit the ball far, but imagine if I could swing properly, and, and I've been trying to get adjustments. Golf pros have tried to talk to me, useless, but they've been trying to help me do this, and it's just not working. So, and you know, we have to make small adjustments. We have to make small adjustments in the things that we do. I, I think about um, um, the Golden State Warriors, the current NBA champion. They've been the NBA champions over the past 10 years, four times. So they've really got some something going on to where they're really making it happen. They have a, a nice little feel for it. They got some great stars on the team. You know, you know who they are, uh, 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 Seth and Clay and Draymond. And these guys are like mainstays. But they added some pieces here and there, Andre Iguodala. They've added some pieces back and forth. But here's what they've done so well in the series and in the in the in in their game they made the adjustments necessary to win. Sometimes you put your starting five out there and you stick with them because you're worried about their emotions. You're worried about, hey, I didn't get to play. I didn't get to. You. This is not the case here. I, I've seen the coach set down the superstar. I've seen the coach put another man in there because he made the adjustments that were necessary to win. Here, Nehemiah is in a place right now, and, and you look at Nehemiah in the, in the Old Testament, you will see it, he, he's a cupbearer. He, 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 see, back in the day, the Babylonians came in and they just wiped out Jerusalem. They just really took, took good care of them. They, 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 they deported them, they got them out of the place, and the actual place of Jerusalem lay in ruins. It was a mess. It was just, everything was burned, it was destroyed, it was crumbling, and these people really did a number on them. And they sent these people out to all these different places. And some of them, you may remember, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. They put them out in all these places, and they were chosen people. Nehemiah was one of them. Didn't get the much press as Daniel and much press as the Hebrew boy, but Nehemiah was one of them, and he was put out. But he was selected by King Artaxerxes to be his cupbearer. Now, the cupbearer is not really a fantastic job because it's a one-time good deal. The food's not good, oh, woo, it could cost you. If the drink is poisonous, you die first. There you go. So he gets to, he, it's not a great job, but he is living a life, uh, we would probably say is kind of luxury. See, many people say that um, Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah is a leadership book. The book of Nehemiah is a book that you can get a whole lot of leadership structure behind it. But I think that, I think that's true, but I think it's more to it. I think Nehemiah was a planner. I think Nehemiah was a, was a, was a, was a, was a, was a he looked at things. He saw things through a different view. I think Nehemiah was a prayer warrior. He prayed about things and he really was concerned. I think Nehemiah had some issues going on in the back of his head that he just could not stand for things to be the way they were. Now, if you go with me to Nehemiah chapter 1, you will see, I'll read this. This is the entire chapter, so it's not long, but I want you to hear it. Pay with me. Sorry. The autobiography of Nehemiah, the son of Helicon. In December of the 20th year of the reign of King Artaxerxes of Persia, when I was in the place of Sushan, I was in the palace of Sushan, one of my fellow Jews named Hanai came to visit me with some men who had arrived from Judah. I took the opportunity to inquire about how things were going in Jerusalem. 
How are they going? I asked the Jews who returned to Jerusalem from their exile. See, for 70 years they were kept away, and, and all of a sudden they get the opportunity to go back, so they get to come back. Of all the millions that were deported, if you will, only 50,000 returned. Well, they replied, things are not good. The wall of Jerusalem is still torn down, still. The gates are still burned. When they heard this, when, when he, they said this, but when Nehemiah heard this, he said, when I heard this, I sat down and I cried. In fact, I refused to eat for several days, for I spent my time in prayer to the God of heaven. He was not too thrilled with what was happening to his people. You may ask the question, why should he care? Why should he care when he's in a palace himself? He's living a life of luxury, if someone was saying, Oh, Lord God, I cried out. Oh, great and awesome God, who keeps his promises and is so loving and kind to those who love and obey him, hear my prayer. This is something personal for me, Nehemiah is saying. Listen carefully to what I say. Look down and see me praying night and day for you, your people, and your people of Israel. I confess that I have sinned against you. Yes, I and my people have committed the horrible sin of not obeying the commandments you gave us through your servant Moses. This is why all this uh, deportation happened. This is why they were uh, consumed. Notice when, when God said, and he gave them over to, he gave them over to. And God is allowing us, and you got free will, you can do this. But I'm telling you that you can hear free will all you want to. The best option is always going to be God. So I, I'm throwing too much in here right now, but I want you to get what I'm saying. In verse 8, oh, please remember that you told Moses. I'm reminding God of something. You said, if you sin, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my laws, even though you are exiled to the furthest corners of the universe, I will bring you back to Jerusalem. For Jerusalem is the place in which I have chosen to live. These are God's words. We were your servants, the people who rescued you by the, your great power. Oh, Lord, please hear my prayer. Hand the prayers of those of us who delight in you, in you to honor you. Please help me now as I go to, go into and ask you the king for this great favor. Put it in his heart to be kind to me, for I was the king's cupper. That's Nehemiah's prayer. Now, Alice and I just returned from family reunion, and we went to family reunion in, in uh, uh, Huntsville, Alabama. And if you've never been there, it's a wonderful place to visit. It's a great place to visit. You, you I, I was kind of not... Um, Looking forward to seeing it like this, but it was beyond my imagination. Really nice, really expressive. They built rockets. People there are, are inquisitive. They get a lot of things going, and I was quite impressed by it. So we came back from there. So my expectations of what I was going to see was not what I saw. Because Huntsville, anything that has a ville on it is named after someone. I'm from Thomasville and, and Thomasville and and. Bang, you know, all these villes in Georgia, you know, I kind of know. But so, Atlanta, so I believe Albany and, and uh, uh, the rest of these places, they were big cities, but they were just nicer cities, if you will. But when we went there, I think the, the, the governance of Huntsville had made slight adjustments to get themselves right for people to come because they, it's a beautiful city, and they had a lot of things going on. And it kind of confirmed in my mind, as I'd already had this, this uh, sermon series ready, Sometimes the only thing we need to do is make some slight adjustments to make things right in our lives. But all the news I heard about was not good news, so, so, so what Nehemiah said. He, he, his expectation, because if you notice the way he asked the question, hey guys, how are things going? That's what we normally do. How many times have you asked someone how are things going and only to hear, oh, they're great, they're great, they're awesome, only to know, not within yourself, but they know within themselves, that's not true. I'm struggling. Things are not, not quite as well. They told Nehemiah the truth. We're dealing with this thing right here for COVID over three years. How are things going? Some of you have had COVID losses and things in COVID that really haven't been the greatest thing for us. Scripture says the Jews were deported, began to deal with it. They start to make homes in their foreign land. They start to create new ways of doing things. They have forgotten about their current firm and surrounding because they say, oh, we're accepting what we, what we have now because what we once had is no longer there. They still follow God's laws, per se, not so much fully because they had gotten away from him. But they had little or no desire to turn to the land where God had allowed them to be deported from. But after 70 years of captivity in Babylon, opportunity presented itself, and only 50,000 took advantage of it. 
upon return, it was as if God let them down. This is what we're coming back to. This is it. This is, this is what we're dealing with. You know, I, when I moved from, um, from Alaska, I, I moved from Alaska. We lived in a nice home I purchased out there in Alaska. And people think Alaska's freezing cold and all that kind of stuff. But we had moved from this place and we're in a nice place in Alaska. We came to Maryland, and at that time, Maryland was not what it was now. It was 2000, and, and uh, it was actually 1993. And we had moved here, and things were not quite, you know, we had to live in a small house, you know. Everything was kind of cramped and everything like that. So it's a big difference, and sometimes we get a letdown. Small adjustment. Think about Nehemiah, a simple cupbearer, but he had rapport with his boss, his boss was the king. He lived in the palace. He tasted the king's food. His boss was the king. His, his boss was the apex. He was the man. And he had uh, uh, some, some rapport with them so he could talk to them, talk to him. And so he, he prayed in all these days. He was wondering about what was going on with his people. And he said, as I, he asked God, as I go in and talk to the king, and notice what he asked the king for, a favor. A favor. Would you do this right here? Would you give me this? Would you give me? And that's part two, which we're going to talk about next Sunday. But I want you to get this right here now. The news, was, the news was not good at all. The, the remnant of people that came by from Exile, they were disappointed. What's Bethel going to do? What's what are we going to do with the disappointments that we have? What's Nehemiah going to do? What's going to happen? What do you think within yourself when someone asks you the question? I said before, how are you? When we ask the question, how are we, and we as after what we have just gone through with COVID, what are we saying? We find Nehemiah weeping. Are we weeping? We find Nehemiah praying. Are we praying? We find Nehemiah concerned. Are we concerned? We've got to get this to the point where we make the adjustments to see how can we fix this, what we have that's not working. Nehemiah knew the state and the position of Jerusalem and wanted to change it. He asked the king to be sent to Judah to rebuild the wall. This is kind of like a, a little ahead of, ahead of the scripture, but you need to hear this. Nehemiah tells the Jews, the priests, and everybody else, listen, we're going to rebuild. And they say, rise up and build. And Nehemiah has this great triumphant start. So what do we do now? Well, maybe we too are in a Nehemiah season right now. A Nehemiah season where things have changed and have we taken the initiative to make the adjustments that we need to make. At Bethel, we believe that we are a place to call home where people are challenged to experience God by converging with him, connecting with each other so that we can help each other complete our lives. Bethel is, is, is in many churches are dealing with some things that have caused them to change. We've made some adjustments over the years, over these past three years through COVID, and these adjustments have, have worked in our favor and praise God for that. But I thought about Ukraine. Their people are being exiled from where they are. I thought about people who are refugees from different lands. I thought about uh, what we think ought to happen versus what does happen. Being on the move is not always comfortable. It's, it's, as a matter of fact, it's uncomfortable. At times, moving doesn't make sense. But it could be that you just may need to make a few adjustments. I know we have a lot of immigrants that come across and, and, think, and those are adjustments. Are they trying to get freedom? Are they trying to, you know, I, I get that. And, and I know this is a tough conversation for us to have as a nation right now, all the things that we're going through. But could it be that it may just be a time for the church to consider what adjustments do we need to make to be the church of today? Maybe moving is not the main thing, but Maybe realigning is. Honestly, we just happened out of these past three years through the adjustments that we made through the time. I remember when it was just me and a few others in the sanctuary preaching, having worship, preaching, and no one else was able to come. I remember mass was the, man, the mandated thing. I remember. The direction may not come from uh, with all the answers attached, attached to them. But you will have directions, and you have, like Nehemiah, you have to seek confirmation on what it is you need to do. Nehemiah said it was a time to rebuild. It was a time for rebuilding for us. I want to give you four adjustments that we need to make, maybe in our personal lives, in the things that we do as a ministry, as a church. And for anyone listening, right, these are four adjustments, and you'll find this in what Nehemiah said. Adjustment number one, make an inquiry about others. Galatians 6.2 said, bear one another's burden and so fulfill the law of Christ. 
Romans 12, 13, contribute to the needs of the saint and seek to show hospitality. Nehemiah was concerned about the needs of others. He inquired about them. How are we doing, brothers? What's going on? When you come to church, when you come and see people in certain places, when you see them at Walmart or in the malls or in the places that you frequent, listen, ask the question, how are you doing? Make an inquiry to find out what's going on. Small adjustment to let them know, I still know you. I still want to know you. I still want to be with you. It, we, we, we told them that survivors they left, they came back to something worse than what they came to. He said, listen, I, I'm concerned about you. I want to ask about you. He heard the prayers. God heard the prayers of Nehemiah's prayer. And I believe Psalm 137, 5 and 6 kind of plays into this. If I forget you, O Jerusalem, because this is what, what Nehemiah is faced with. He's one of those. If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. If I do not remember you, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not exalt Jerusalem above the chief city, my chief joy, if Jerusalem it was special to God, then it ought to be special to me, Nehemiah. He said it like that, that he wanted them to know, this is important to me. I've got to inquire about you. If you're watching today, know that we love and miss you. If you're pondering church today, whether to return or whether not to return, we have a place for you, but we do understand what you're going through. If you've gone through stuff, we hear you and know that we love you. Adjustment number two, consider the outcome. Do something. That's all I'm saying. Consider the outcome. Where others are, are, are should bother us, where, where others are not, make a phone call. Send an email. Maybe go back and be old school and write a letter. And just, just, just say, how are you? What's going on? What's happening to you? First Thessalonians 5, 11 says, So continue to encourage each other and build each other up, just as some of you are doing today. You, it cannot always be dependent upon those who are in the pastorate to do this. The job of the pastor is to equip encourage, motivate, to, to be the example. So that, like Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Let me show you what I'm doing. Nehemiah's reaction to the news, when Nehemiah heard the news the first time, he was shaken. So much so that he just could not eat. He had to fast. He had to seek God. He, he was taken. Take Moses. Take Joseph. Take Esther. Take Daniel. These are people in high position, but when things got to their ears, it shook them. It should shake us too how we see people going. Nehemiah couldn't do what he needed to do by himself, so he had to go and get some leadership. So he had to explain what was going on with him. God knew that. Nehemiah did not complain, whine, or see how he could fix the problem. He sought God, and immediately he knew what he had to do, and so he kept praying about it. Adjustment number three, Find time to seek God, just like I just said. Find time to seek God on the matter, on whatever matters happen to you. Not just COVID. I seek God about what's going on with COVID and what's happening in our in our in our church and in our community right now. I think about the world. I think about the situation. I really don't like looking at news because it's not, you know, news is supposed to be news. Good news, bad news, all the news involved. We're just both if you look at the news nowadays. People want the negative, the nasty, the troubling stuff. They don't want the good stuff. What's good is happening? I mean, a cat running up a tree. Come on, I know that can be kind of boring and laborious. But but you know what? Let a four car accident happen with some you. Oh, we can't. We we stop and we look. Well, that's the good news. Take time to seek God on the man. Lamentations three twenty five. Lamentation means to beg out. The Lord is good to them that wait for Him, to the soul that seeks Him. We've got to search God so much so now to what we want to be, where he wants us to be. And I pray, as Nehemiah prayed, you got to hear this. When you got to the point where, where all you can do is pray, when your heart hurts, you, your pain of everybody else's pain hurt, you hurt with the hope that they are, their hopelessness, this is where Nehemiah was. He prayed for some time. He fasted for some time. He took off from the things that were normal and did the abnormal. He made an adjustment in how he lived his life. Through the rebuilding, the reshaping, the realigning, it was going to come, but it was time for prayer to be the foundation of what we build that on. Nehemiah took time in his pain to stretch to God. He took time in his hopelessness to say, God, you got to help us on this. Prayer will give you strength because the Bible said, they that wait upon the Lord will be, will be renewed. They'll get new strength, as the scripture says in Isaiah 40. Adjustment number four, and this is my final one. Look to God to keep his promises. 
God, Nehemiah went and reminded God what he told Moses and what he told them when they brought him out of Egypt. He told them, Psalm 32, 8, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Nehemiah comes to God looking at his promises. God's promises are yes and amen. Those are his promises. Nehemiah remembered and he asked God to remember what he said. He asked God to take the time to look at what he said. And when he does that, he, he, I, I think of all the things that, that through the years that God has promised us as a church. That's what Nehemiah did. I think of all the things that Nehemiah kind of went through. He said, man, we are deported. We haven't forgot it. We've been moved from where we need to be, but we haven't forgot it. We've been changed from where we need to be, but we haven't forgotten God and the promises that God gave us. I want to give you a little history on Bethel, if you don't mind. Look at what God has done for us in our expectation of him. In 1929, we went from a tent to where it says, pinch of tent pegs here. We went from a tent to a nice building on Baltimore Street, which it, housed, it only housed like 60 people, but 32 of them were in there. So that's like a full house, almost half full. And we really did wonders in there. And it, it was just more of saying, look what God will do. And that was the premise behind that. And a few years after that, we moved to a place on Woodward Street, which is not too far from us, but we built it. It seated about 150 people. And wow, things started happening. And uh, we just figured that it would be great if the theme behind that, the God of heaven would give us success. And he will. Then we went from that to getting the building on um, uh, uh, Savage Gifford Road to what we met in church in there. And we started thinking about this building here on Vomerhausen Road. And it, the, you build it, I feel it came to us. And this was, the, the church on Gifford Road was lights in today's darkness, what we need to be in this community. And to enlarge the place for your tent when we build our other building over here. We're not about building buildings, we're about building the kingdom. And the kingdom is what makes everything happen. Buildings just have to be a part of it. The foundation that rests upon for us is the foundation of the word of God. Just like Nehemiah prayed, we pray. Just like Nehemiah fasted, we fast. Just like Nehemiah thought and sought God about the thing. That's what we are doing. Seeking God about all the things that he has done so we can give him praise in all this. Make inquiries. Find out how everyone else is doing. See what's happening. Consider the outcome. What's going to happen later? What are we looking to be? What are we looking to do? Seek God and find out what God would do and how he would do it. Remind God of his promises. That's how we get to where God is. That's Nehemiah chapter 1, part 1. That's our 16th chapter. And you will see that in this book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah takes the time to just, just kind of explain it all out for us. So won't you be a part of that? Nehemiah chapter 1 is, is the apex of where everything says, the foundation. What bothered him should bother us. This is your pastor. What bothers me, pray about it. What bothers me, can be concerned about it. What bothers me, find out what God says about it. What bothers me. God's promises are yes and amen. They haven't changed. That's part one, kind of in a synopsis area. And I want you to join us this Sunday for part two. And we'll go on from there. But Nehemiah is where we're supposed to be. Let's make those adjustments, those small adjustments that we need to make to see what God does for us. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you right now. I pray a blessing over everyone that's watching, everyone that will watch, and everyone that will be in our church. I pray, God, that you would just bless us as we seek the things that Nehemiah did through our own personal lives. God, give us the adjustments that we need to make in our lives to be the people you called us to be in our lives. So, Lord, let your favor rest with us. Let it rise up and be great with us, and we just thank you for everything that you're doing. Until we see you the next time or either online, may the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't forget, watch the Midday Vlog as well. Midday Vlog starts on uh, Wednesday at noon. You need to watch it. We're talking about sentence. Be a good day. God bless you. See you later.